Hey Waters, welcome back to my channel. It's been very long since I posted a YouTube video. So as you can see, I'm all dressed up because today's topic is going to be about pre-colonial Visayan clothing. <laughs> now, so normally when people think of Filipino traditional clothing, what do they always think of? Hmm, is it the Barang Tagalog? Or the Trae de Mestiza? Or maybe the most famous example, which is the Terno. So normally, when we think of these items, it's always a result of colonial influences. Like when the Spanish first arrived, their influence uh, drastically changed our traditional attires. And when the Americans also colonized us, their influences also tr drastically changed our traditional attires as well. But then a lot of people are always wondering, what did we wear before colonialism? You know, not a lot of Filipinos actually know what did we wear before colonialism. And some people still believe that we were naked, uncivilized savages. But that's incorrect. In fact, our ancestors were actually very fashionable people and we already had different styles of clothing and garments that were in existence during pre-colonial times and it also depended per ethnic group since we were not one country before. Each ethnic group has its own distinct style of how they dress before colonialism but for today's video I'm going to be tackling on my ethnic groups which are the Visayans. One of the most famous sources that we can get inspiration or reference from pre-colonial attire is the Boxer Codex, which shows all these illustrations of the natives during the time when the Spaniards first stepped foot into our country. Does that mean that we should only rely on the Boxer Codex? Absolutely not. In fact, we actually have more than just the Boxer Codex when we want to learn about our pre-colonial history, culture, even fashion styles. Aside from the Boxer Codex, another great source where we can learn about pre-colonial fashion styles would be in this book, Barangay by William Henry Scott. Not to mention the old dictionaries that we have regarding our languages. We can also look to those as reference for our traditional attires at the time. And it's not only limited to Spanish records because in fact, even the Chinese had records of us. Even the Indians, other Southeast Asians, even as far as the Arabs have also had descriptions while they were trading with us. Even today, we can also look into the different academic papers regarding Southeast Asian traditional fashion written by other Southeast Asian writers today. So we have a lot more than just the Boxer Codex. And it's also important to remember that with all these sources, we should definitely encourage cross-referencing. So I also encourage cross-referencing because most of the records that we have regarding our pre-colonial history and culture, a lot of them were from the Spaniards, and most of them are written through a Western perspective. So it's important to cross-reference so that we can get it through the perspective of a Southeast Asian or an Austronesian in general. And also, with cross-referencing, we will be able to piece together the puzzle pieces to get the full picture of what it was like to live during pre-colonial times, how were the styles uh, during that time, how did people dress during that time. And with that, let's start with the clothes. So let's start off with the men. The common components of a man's pre-colonial look consists of the pudong and the bahag. Now the pudong is a kind of cloth that a man would wrap around his forehead and is commonly seen among different ethnic groups here in the Philippines during the pre-colonial times. Until today, some ethnic groups here in the Philippines wear head wrap, especially among the men, which is similar to the pudong that was worn by Visayan men during pre-colonial times. Then we have the bahag which is how the Spaniards translated it as a loincloth or something that men would wear on their bottoms. But just to remind you, the way that Visayan men wore their bahags is very different compared to how men in the Cordilleras wore their bahags. In fact, 
the way that Visayan men wore their bahags, the bahag for the Visayans actually covered a lot more compared to the bahag worn in the Cordilleras. And aside from the bahag, Visayan men also wore the tampi, which is described as something wrapped around and also not passed in between the legs. So essentially, it would be akin to a sarong. And of course, even Visayan men wore the baru, or in some other Visayan languages, bado or bayu. Although preferably, men would prefer not to wear the baro, especially when they were outside, because they wanted to show off their tattoos. Tattooing was an essential part in Visayan culture during pre-colonial times, because when a man was tattooed, it means he has battled in war and was victorious. And another time, they would also get tattoos because they essentially finished um, deflowering. You know what I mean? <laughs> and now, let's move on to the women. The Cyan women were especially stylish with the variety of clothes that they wore during the pre-colonial era, especially among the wealthy ones and maybe even the Timawa women as well. Let's start off with the Baru, or in other Visayan languages, the Bado and the Bayou, which is what we translate as a blouse. And then below the Baru, women would wear a tubular wrap skirt called a Patajong or a Tapis. So just like what I'm wearing, I'm wearing a pre-colonial Visayan look of a wealthy woman consisting of a baru and even a patajong or tapis and also accessories. Yeah, so my set is pretty small, so if you want a clear picture, uh, this right here shows the full view of my attire for today. So the wearing of baru and tapis, or patajong, this proves that wearing of barat saya or the traje de mestiza during the colonial era has been in existence since pre-colonial times. But did you guys know, baru and tapis is not the only style. Oh yeah. There are more styles. So another style that women wore during pre-colonial times is the lambong. So the wearing of the lambong is very similar to how one would wear a malong. Basically getting a tubular skirt or a tubular garment and just wrap it around your body like a wrap dress or worn over the shoulders or even over the head. And this style was especially common among different ethnic groups during pre-colonial times, like especially in Mindanao where, where old photographs of women were seen wearing malongs as a tubular dress, even extended among the Bicolanos in which they called the style as lawas. And the wearing of the lambong as a tubular wrap dress is very similar to the wrap dress style seen on Kalantanese Malay women, Javanese women, Balinese women, and even some women in Cambodia and Thailand. Another style that women wore was the sinina, which is translated to foreign style clothing or clothes that are just like in the style of India or China. But for the Visayans, the word sina meant for foreigner, so it could apply to any foreign style. Finally, there's also the selagbay or sagbay for short, or just simply commonly known as alampay. Because shawls are one of the most common garments seen on Southeast Asian women, it's no surprise that even Visayan women would also wear them, especially when they go out to shield themselves from the sun. Just like men, Visayan women also tattooed themselves. But for women, tattooing was a symbol of beauty, or they also get tattooed when they get deflowered. And what else is common for both men and women to wear in pre-colonial times? gold jewelry. As gold was very abundant in Southeast Asia and especially in our archipelago, there are lots of gold jewelry was also worn among the people. Even the slaves wore gold. There are different artifacts that you can find in the Ayala Museum that shows all the different excavated gold that is found in our archipelago. Flowers are also worn during pre-colonial times, especially among 
both men and women. And we should also remember that just like other ethnic groups, the Visayans were engaged in trade and diplomacy with other kingdoms, even neighboring kingdoms like the Majapahit Empire, Srivijaya, even as far as Champa, India, and even with the Arabs, and also with the Chinese. So with all that, it's no surprise that pre-colonial Visayan attires resemble other Southeast Asian traditional attires because we were interconnected because of trade and diplomacy. So I dare you to say that we're copying Malaysia or Indonesia. I dare you. So there are obviously more fashion styles that Visayans wore, even armor and even several different specific kinds of jewelry. But I won't be able to tackle that. However, you'll be able to tackle them in our Beyond Filipiniana webinar. The Beyond Filipiniana webinar was started by the founder of Caracoa Productions, Nancy Villiver, in which we educate people on pre-colonial Visayan attires for both men and women. Joining Mincy in that webinar includes other speakers, Shari Villiver, Kalib Namwaran, and yours truly. The Beyond Filipiniana webinar will tackle on the different styles and garments worn in the Visayas before colonialism and the historical background relevant to the topic. And also, tips and even tutorials will be provided. Although these webinars have already been done back in 2022, you can still register to get a copy of the recording. If you're a mainlander Filipino like I am, you only have to pay 200 pesos. And if you're part of the diaspora, you pay 500 pesos. And if you pay additional 50 pesos, you'll be given lifetime access to our sources, references, and materials that we use for our webinar, tutorials on how to wear certain Visayan clothing styles, and a guide on how you can make or get your own pre-colonial Visayan attire. If you're interested, you can register because I will be leaving down the link to the webinar in the description below. Or you can also check out Caracoa Productions' Facebook page. Caracoa Productions aims to promote, educate, and to also showcase pre-colonial design culture, history, traditions. So don't forget to give them a like as well. And so that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like, comment down below, and also don't forget to subscribe for more pre-colonial content. And if you're also interested, you can follow my TikTok at Naya Diwata because I have more pre-colonial content stuff there too. And you can also follow my Instagram because sometimes I post my pre-colonial stuff there too. Once again, thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed this video, once again, like, comment, and subscribe. Goodbye, Diwaras!